Hello, and this is my review of the G4 Doorbell Pro PoE and the UP Chime PoE from Ubiquiti. Hello, my name's Alex, and welcome back to Hostify. Today, we're going to look at the G4 Doorbell Pro PoE and also the PoE Chime for Unify Protect. Before we get into it, here at Hostify, we offer cloud hosting for Unify, UISP, and TP-Link Armada, with plans starting from only $9 per month. Click the link in the description or the top right corner for more information. Okay then, the G4 Doorbell Pro PoE. When Ubiquiti first dipped its toes into the water of doorbells back in 2020, the feature set was certainly of its time. All it could really do was detect motion and it could be powered by standard doorbell wiring. The Unify Protect platform has come a very long way. All the cameras now on sale are capable of a multitude of different smart detections, such as person, vehicles, animals, and much more. Even more so when using a dedicated AI camera or even the AI port. The AI key has also transformed what is possible with even more detections and large language models available. In the box, you get the doorbell and the chime, as this is the pack where you get both together. There's this nice magnetic door which reveals the mounting options for the chime, which we'll look into a bit later. These include mounting options on surface and recessed inside a wall. Below the doorbell itself, you get a few mounting options, such as a flush wall mount, which works if you have a cable going inside the wall, an angled option and a mount which I'll be using. This lets you run the cable down below the unit. Just looking at the hardware, the doorbell itself is incredibly good quality with the large 5 megapixel main camera, but in reality this actually comes out to be 2 megapixels, and Unify Protect itself classes it as a HD camera, not 4K or 2K. There's a very tactile physical button for ringing the doorbell, infrared blasters, and a small LCM screen for displaying messages, and also GIFs, which we'll look at a bit later. On the back is a gigabit ethernet port, and the doorbell takes standard PoE or 802.3 AF, and there's a handy cable grommet, which, as we'll discover later, can be installed over the cable connector. The installation process was actually fairly simple. I ran an ethernet cable to the location I was going to use, removed my old and very simple doorbell, and this one is actually battery powered and only cost around 10 pounds. I then crimped a new cable up and installed the ethernet connector. Next, I drilled some holes for the unified doorbell and hammered in some wall plugs. Because my cable isn't going through the wall and is instead below the camera, I had to use the surface mount adapter, which unfortunately does mean that the unit itself does stick out somewhat. Unfortunately, while I wanted it, it wasn't possible to run the cable through the wall. I then also fitted the rubber gasket onto the ethernet cable and then click the doorbell into place. Next, the UP chime is also going to be surface mounted in the house. Excuse the cobwebs, but this was also actually pretty simple. I just ran the cable through the back of the mount and then screwed it into place. The mounting mechanism for the chime unit is also pretty satisfying and just clicks into place. So now everything is plugged in, let's go ahead and adopt the G4 doorbell pro and the smart period chime. Now I've got my CloudKey Gen 2 Plus set up. Um, I've used this device for the previous video I did on the AI port. Um, it's just my test sort of setup here. So you can see I've got the uh, hard drive installed, all the cloud keys ready to go really. So under Unified Devices, I've got the old uh, G3 Bullets and the G5 Flex I used in that previous video. I've also got an AI port adopted, which we will test a bit later on. And I've got the Smart Peary Chime and the Doorbell Pro PoE. Let's go ahead and adopt both of those and we'll go through the setup process. So both of those are now adopted. Let's look at the G4 Doorbell Pro PoE first. So you can see on this main screen, I've got a preview of the camera feed as well as the second package camera. Got it, the fact that it's online, got a connection, uh, which is gigabit. I've had a look on my switch. Firmware version, MAC address, IP address, all that sort of good stuff. Uh, pretty typical Unify device stuff now. And also they've got the new alarm manager options down there which you can actually do some quite cool stuff with. On this camera feed here, we can see we've got the, well, obviously the camera feed. Um, this is from the main camera and we've got the package camera down there. So with the first G4 doorbell that Ubiquiti released a few years ago, um, the camera just had one camera and it had a little LED light facing to the floor and that was about it. This new 
second generation G4 version. Um, obviously comes in Wi-Fi and as well as this Peary version. And you get some nice customization options. But you also get that new second camera, which is quite useful for looking at packages. It's probably more useful in a more traditional setup than mine. If you've got like a normal door porchway, um, you can probably see the whole floor of the porch quite easily and get access to where packages are. In the top left hand corner, you've got the option to select between different views. So at the moment, I've got the main camera plus the, the package camera. You can choose just to have the main camera itself, but you can also choose just to have the package camera. Now it's worth bearing in mind that the package camera's frame rate is quite low um, compared to the main camera. It's only designed really to look at the things that have happened. You'll see things moving from time to time, um, but that is just essentially how that works. Um, it's not quite real time, but it, it does display real time stuff. In the top right corner, usual sort of stuff again, we've got this shortcuts button, which you can use uh, to display other cameras. If you're trying to watch a an event or an incident that took place, you can easily switch between the cameras and get a good flow going on um, when trying to pinpoint something that happened. You've also got the snapshot button here and a settings wheel as well. In settings, it's usual kind of stuff really. We've got motion zones, um, which you can go ahead and create zones for, just like that. Uh, you've got the smart zones, which has got support for loitering, animal, person and vehicle. We will add the AI port later, but that will also add face detection. Um, and we'll see what that looks like. Uh, crossing lines, which is a recent feature, privacy or privacy blackouts, and then also a new feature in Unify 6.0, which we're, we're on version 6.0.14. You can now move the um, info cards. So in the top left-hand corner, which is where it's always been, you've got the day and time, as well as the, the name of the, the camera itself. What you can do now is position that bit of information within the frame. So I can move it to the top right-hand corner, I can also move it to the bottom right as well, which is quite handy. And it moves the little Unify logo out of the way. And the bottom left behind the package camera. So obviously if you change the view, you'll be able to see it. We'll stick with the top left one there. And then also the usual sort of stuff you can get with the logo, get rid of the, add the bit rate if you want to as well. A lot of uh, handy information there. So let's change it back to how it was. Also image tuning. So you've got shutter exposure. So you can choose the different options you want there. HDR and FPS. The G4 Doorbell Pro PoE supports up to 30 FPS and the uh, video compression is 6 megabits per second. It isn't a, a 4K camera at all. Um, that'll probably come with the G5 version whenever that launches. Uh, and then the usual sort of stuff down here. The, the, the only unique option here is the lens distortion correction which you can turn on or off. When you turn it off it kind of looks like a ring doorbell feed. It's got that very sort of fisheye uh, view which you can see I've got the bin here and the, this car here so if I turn the lens distortion back on you'll see how much of the frame you'll actually lose so you lose the bin and you lose half that car so it's um just bear that in mind you might want that fisheye lens if you've got a small porch but you have got those options there which is quite nice um down here we've got a button to change the video quality um I'm using the unify.ui well the site manager to view this camera um, but you can choose between low quality uh, you've got automatic and high quality. Let's stick with high quality. Got the unmute and mute sound, full screen. And then if you're not using Safari, you can choose to talk through the camera. Um, it's probably best used on a phone, actually. Uh, and you can do two-way audio with someone who's at your door. If we go to recording settings, we've got the recording manager shortcut there. We've got the options to record, which is all pretty standard now. Um, and one thing I noticed with this camera is that the um, motion events were turned off by default. So by default, you have have put in the AI events as standard. And personally, um, as someone who's used Unify Protect since it came out in 2019, it's it's been interesting to see the development uh, process of how Ubiquiti is doing motion detection or event detection. We're at a place now where you probably don't need motion detection if you've got a, a well-lit scene um, or if you've got somewhere where there's a lot of shrubbery moving around and shadows and things. The motion event engine it's got, um, it's fairly limited in terms of what it can do. It obviously can't determine between animals, packages, purse, people and vehicles. And you've also got the option of audio detections there. And I think once you pair a camera with the AI port, you get the face detection, the license plate detection. Um, you probably don't need motion events, actually. It just creates a lot of clutter in your feed. Obviously, if you've got older G2 or G3 cameras, which you can use with Unify Protect, you still need motion detection. Um, but at least there is that option there, which is quite nice. Uh, and then obviously the stuff we looked at there. Settings as well, so we can rename the camera. There we go, it's a sensible name. Microphone sensitivity, 
you can uh, disable the microphone while everything's been recorded, which is required in some areas of the United States and other countries. And then also it might be taken, might be required to take it a step further where you need to disable the microphone completely unless you factory set the camera. So there are some nice options there for sort of um, regulatory information there. Night vision. Now I'm just going to point out that obviously the G4 doorbell has got two cameras. The, the main camera has got an IR shutter built in. Um, and then it's got the IR blasters pointing forward. The package camera can't do uh, infrared at all. So if it is nighttime, what you'll see is just a black feed. But I don't think that's that much of an issue, really. Um, you've got status sound, status light, and then the doorbell tone itself. So by default, you've got this one. And then your book you've added four in total. So you've got express line. You've also got sun drops. And lastly, you've got the traditional one as well. And you can go ahead into um, the settings and add your own audio if you want to. So you can upload your own MP3, assign it to a device, and you've got the option of a potentially hilarious <laughs> uh, doorbell tone. And you can apply that same tone to the, the smart Peary Chime as well. Let's go back to the doorbell here. And then you can customize the sound. Personally, all these doorbell sounds, they sound quite um, harsh and quite loud on the doorbell itself. So I've been lowering it to about 30% and that seems to be a good sensible amount for me. And then you can test the tone on the device if you need to as well. And then one big upgrade between the G4 doorbell and the Pro version is the color screen. So the first version had that little screen which you could display little, uh, small messages on. Whereas this one's got a but you can put GIFs on there if you want to, and then you've actually got this default dog one, uh, which is quite cool, and you can up upload your own your own GIFs if you need to as well. Uh, there are some custom messages. So I've got my own one here that says subscribe to Hostify. You can customise how long that's on there for. Uh, do not disturb, leave package at door, and there's some custom graphics for those. If we scroll down, we'll look at paired chimes in a second, but you can add a fingerprint and an NFC card. Now, if you've got an applicable uh, door lock, probably one that's not HomeKit, only ones that are open to other third-party sources you can in some way uh, attach the the door lock to the uh, unified protect system and the fingerprint or the nfc card will actually unlock that door for you um, sort of like a, a system that's outside of any home-based smart systems um, so there's some nice options there when the doorbell pro was first launched that fingerprint sensor it wasn't functional for a good amount of time there so it's good to see that it was wasn't fairly recently, but it was recent enough to mention. Um, and then the other option we've got here is paired chimes. So, in theory, you can un you can pair an unlimited amount of doorbells with one chime, and then you can also pair an unlimited amount of chimes with one doorbell, um, and that gives you some nice options there. So we're going to pair the smart Peary chime with the doorbell, and that reveals some extra sound options. So what you can do is uh, choose another ringtone, uh, customize how loud that ringtone is in my experience the the chime itself isn't actually that loud um so i'd, I'd probably best to have it on the 100 percent volume and then you can do test tone on device there we go so nice options there as well if we look, go into the smart chime settings it says it's powered with the doorbell got the firmware version the usual sort of stuff and let's give this a sensible name there we go. And you can create tags if you sort your cameras that way. And also you've got the option to pair other doorbells. Uh, let's go and do some uh, motion detection with packages and uh, faces and things. And we'll see what, see what we get. So I've just done some testing there. And you can see it's done a few things. It's picked up... Uh, the vehicle, because I essentially walked in front of it, so it picked up the vehicle there. Well, actually, when I was moving the lens lens thing, it prompted a, a vehicle detection. Uh, you've got the person there, so I'm pretending to be a delivery man here. So once it loads, there we go. So I pop the parcel down there, rang the doorbell, and there we go. And then also the, the package camera did do its job as well, so it picked up the, the package there. So it sort of flips between the main camera and the and the package camera to give you an idea of what's been happening. Let's look at the the audio. I left the package down there. Also got the got the person detection. Uh, this is a good test, a good time to test the the the, the microphones and the speaker on the doorbell. 
even at 30%, the speaker's a little bit too loud. Um, and I'm stood about, I say, half a metre away from the doorbell. I'm not speaking that loudly, but you should be able to get a good idea of what this sounds like. So I think that sounds pretty good, actually. Um, the microphones do seem really decent on the doorbell. They seem really good quality. Um, what we're going to do now is test out the AI port. Uh, so let's click to pair, and we'll pair that with the doorbell. And what that would do is add license plate detection. It will also add face detection, and it should uh, improve some other options there. So let's go and test that out as well. Um, so the only thing it picked up was actually me. Um, and when I was doing some testing off camera, I did notice that the AI port paired with the G4 doorbell had a problem with package detection. So it seems to kind of disable that potentially. Um, so I'd watch that. Hopefully that's a bug that Ubiquiti can fix in the near future. Yeah, it took, it took a little second to load in there, but we've got the person, the reg, which I said should work. Um, package was on the previous one, uh, the doorbell ring, and then the face detection there. So you can see it picked up a face. Yeah, so that's pretty good. So as soon as I got a bit, a bit closer to the camera, it did pick up the face, but yeah, still pretty good. But yeah, the only thing I would watch is the, the package detection does not seem to work properly uh, with the AI port and the G4 doorbell. I'd imagine that's something to do with how the AI port is scanning that feed from the, the system. So hopefully uh, Ubiquiti can fix that pretty soon. Uh, the G4 doorbell does have its own web page, much like any other camera. Uh, the the uh, the Chime does not have its own web page, which is, which is fair enough. Uh, neither does the AI port either. Now, once a camera is paired with Unify Protect, it then obtains a, uh, a set password by the system. So the username is always UBNT. And then you go to under system, you go to advanced, and you can copy and paste this password here. And you can always change that, and any camera on the system will get that new password. Uh, this this uh, page is typically used for making a camera turn into standalone mode, which makes sense for some cameras. There's some cameras you might just want to use as a sort of a streamer on a website, so just a camera feed on a website, and these cameras are quite affordable, um, especially the G5 range is quite affordable, but also quite good image quality uh, and nice nice networking around it. So I can see that being quite useful, and you can put them in standalone mode. However, it makes less sense on a, on a doorbell camera, um, but there are, there are those options there if you need it. So you can go ahead and look at the system, update the firmware manually, which you can't do that easily uh, when used with Unify Protect. You can look at the network settings here and change those if you need to and also configure so you've got the the name here the protect server it's connected to and also if you've got a layer 3 setup like uh, over a VPN with Unify Protect cameras uh, or a public IP address you can put those IP addresses in there it makes a lot of sense for very wide deployments that you do use VPNs so some nice options there as well so after using the G4 doorbell pro for a week or so what do I think well, it's actually super impressive. The ability to not rely on a Wi-Fi connection is a massive bonus with this PoE version. If you don't have an existing wired doorbell, which is very common in the UK, for example, then this PoE version makes powering it much easier. It isn't without its flaws, though. The screen could be a tad brighter, as in direct sunlight, it can be hard to see. And there is some delay between someone pressing the button and then the mobile app notification going off. The UP Chime, for example, is fairly instant in terms of displaying a sound. Also, if you are using the Chime in the hallway close to where you sleep, then the blue light can be awfully bright. And as of recording, there isn't any way to turn this off in settings. Let's also mention the pricing. This PoE kit comes in at $379 in the US, or £360 in the UK. Compare that to the standard Wi-Fi model, which is $299 in the US, or £274 in the UK, and it doesn't seem to be too bad, considering you get the PoE chime included. Both the Wi-Fi and PoE versions come in either black or white. However, I'd love to know what you think of the G4 Doorbar Pro PoE, and the UP Chime PoE in the comments down below. Once again, if you need fast and reliable cloud hosting for Unify, UISP, or TeamPlink Amada, check out Hostify with our plans from just $9 per month. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more. My name's Alex, and I'll see you again next time.